Hey, so I'm learning and growing as a video editor, and in 2012, I officially switched over from Final Cut X to Adobe Premiere, and I loved the change. It was awesome, everything about it. Uh, but I realized over time that there's a couple things that I really should have known how to do a lot earlier. And these aren't things that like a month later, I'm like, oh, how interesting, you can actually do that. <laughs> these are like, no, like really, really, really basic things. And some of them I only found out how to do like a matter of weeks ago. So this is a video all about those things, five of them. Now, just to be clear, this isn't a video about five life-changing things you never knew about Premiere that will blow your mind. It's way more like five things that, oh wow, you didn't know how to do that? I'm kind of embarrassed to be your friend now, video. So here we go. Number one, audio game. No matter what kind of video editing software you use, there's some sort of baked in way that you can actually change and adjust your audio volume. And with Premiere, it's this little bar that you have in the middle of your audio. You bring it up and you bring it down and behold, you change your volume accordingly. But I still remember the first time that I brought it all the way up to that familiar 6.02 decibels and played it back just to realize it's not loud enough. Oh no. Thankfully, I had a good friend who told me that, look, if you just stack the audio right on top of itself, you're actually gonna make it louder. And he was totally right. The only problem is that this kind of works in like an asymptotical value, where the first time you do it, it makes a big change. But then afterwards, every time you do it, it makes a smaller and smaller and smaller change. So it wasn't long before I had these giant stacks of audio, all for the purpose of just making this one little clip a little bit louder. I know, it's stupid. But then I was editing with a friend of mine who told me like, hey, you know you can just use audio gain, right? What is audio gain, I asked. Right click, audio gain, put in a number, and bada bing, bada boom, you change the volume. So simple. Number two, deleting unused cache data. So I used to edit it on a Mac, and they have this nice little layout that tells you exactly what your storage is being taken up by. Except it doesn't really help sometimes when half of it is taken up by this category called other. So for years, I just came to terms with the idea that I would never be able to use half of my computer storage. It was just haunted or something, and I would go my entire life never being able to use it. That is until I finally got fed up enough that I decided to ask the internet, what the flip is going on? Turns out that tons and tons of it is taken up by this stuff called cache data. And now I won't get into what cache data is because there's tons of other videos that do a way better job than I probably could, like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. But long story short, if you're not working on that project or if you're done with it, you don't need that cache data, like at all. Clean it out and you got 60 gigs of your storage back. Beautiful. Number three, in and out markers. This one's not life changing, but if you're editing something, at some point in time, you're gonna wanna export it. So what do you do? You set your in and out markers and then you go to your export menu with command or control M, right? Well, that's what you probably should do, but that's not what I did for a long time. My method was just to leave the sequence as it was, go to the export menu and scrub through until I find where the best point was to set my in and outs. Then I would drag the little bars to where I thought they should be, but wait, it gets better. At one point in time, I saw this little time code that tells me where in the timeline I am. So I would literally take my playhead all the way to the end of my project, copy the time code, go into the export menu, paste that time code, and then set that as my out marker. Terrifying when you realize just how quick it can actually be when you do it right. Number four, the select everything tool. Now this one legitimately made me mad when I found out about it. So I was editing a short film with a friend of mine and I had to move the entire timeline over from a certain point like midway through the film. So I was selecting everything on the timeline and then I would like zoom in a little bit more, shift, and then like try to highlight a few more things. So my buddy looks over at me and he's like, why don't you just select everything to the right of the clip? And I'm like, that's what I'm doing. And he's like, no, with the select everything to the right of tool. That's a thing? Apparently, yeah. Hit A, select a video within your timeline, and bada bing, bada boom, everything to the right is selected. My jaw literally dropped when I saw this. And if you hit Shift A, you can do exactly the opposite. Select everything to the left. Mind blown. And number five, budget your render and export times. This one has a story behind it that's way, 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 way too long to actually tell here. But basically that I needed to export something for a film festival, small one. Uh, and it ended up that we got it to the place physically where it needed to be about 90 seconds before it needed to be shown. Don't do that. I don't suggest it. It's a great story. There was people unconscious. There was screaming and chatting. There was like fast and furious driving trying to get this file to the place it needed to be on time. So if you want to hear that story, then there's a video for that or there will be soon, question mark? Not 100% sure. If there is, it'll be right here. Basically, the long and the short of it is that give yourself way longer than you ever think is necessary in order to actually like render and export everything. And we're not talking like an hour extra time. We're talking like a day. 
because you never know what's gonna happen. It could take hours to export for some unknown reason. Your computer could totally crash when you don't need it to, or somebody could totally spill water on it and destroy it forever. Literally all those things have happened to me, so nothing is out of the question here. So I mean, bottom line is that it's better to be safe than sorry, but it's also better to be like extra crazy, paranoid safe than really, really, really sorry. So there it is, five things about Premiere that I really wish I knew ahead of time or even more recently, but I learned and I grew from it. And most of you are probably like, that's hilarious that he didn't know how to do those really easy things. But there might be some of you who are like, hey, I learned something today. If that's you, then you're secret safe with me. You've always known how to do it, haven't you?